Hey, so these video tutorials are aimed to get you up to speed on 3D Coat, assuming you already know basically 3D applications. It's not like an intro to like all things 3D, just all the main tools and like how to get you going. So when you open up 3D Coat, you base you get this as a uh, shortcut which can open your like a previous file, or we can jump right into the voxel sculpting room. So the, when I say rooms, what I'm talking about, there are a few rooms. There's the paint room, tweak, retopo, UV, voxel, render. So they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, and we're going to get into specifics uh, of each of those in their own video. So basically I want to walk you through some of the main things. Um, if you ever watch videos of someone else doing 3D coat, like these all can, might be in a different place because um, a palette you can just move around and they can dynamically change. So Basically, you'll have to look at uh, what the palette actually is if uh, you're seeing another video. Um, so there's two types of objects in 3D Coat. There are voxels. Uh, even though voxels are covered in a mesh, and you can see that, uh, this is the wireframe of that mesh, but uh, it's really just considered voxels because if you would come to U, the UV uh, space or UV mapping, it doesn't exist. You can't see it because it's still voxels, and voxels can't be don't have UVs. It's only important to know that like is your object uh, in voxel space or surface or voxel space? Is it a voxel or is it surface? So if you would come over to the paint room you'd still see it but as soon as you paint on it 3D Coat's already turning it into a surface just to give you a heads up. So like right here's the layers to give you so it says S right here if I hit that now it's a V for voxel so it's surface or voxel so basically um, that's turning it so it can paint onto the to the vertex. Um, now I want to talk about brushes. So you can see this is obviously the brush. Um, if I would just go to uh, standard, I mean this is the the general brush that most people use. Um, so anyway, the right mouse button is w one of the main ways you'll control the size and shape of the brush. So if I right mouse button and slide left and right, it changes the brush to grow and shrink. Right mouse button, grow and shrink. And then if you would go up and uh, up and down, you scale the strength of the, the brush. So we can see this is a very smooth brush. Um, anyway, so the other aspect of the brush that's pretty fun um, is the. Uh, so these are right up here is all the brush settings. If you want to like just be specific, like you can just type in a value and then you have exactly your ten radius brush with uh, smoothing, fall off, etc., and the depth. So if you look at the depth right here is at 100%, you can see it changing with uh, with my scale. And then you can look at the radius and you can see that changing as I just use the right mouse button. So the other aspect of is how you can use a control panel. The uh, <coughs> You have the space bar which will open up all, is just a quick access to these tools. I'm hitting the right mouse button to slide up and down on the this tool menu. Uh, most of these things you'd figure out by just playing around, but so anyway, the control button, as you can see right here, uh, when it goes blue, that's the going to be the opposite. So now it's pushing in. So positive would be the normal brush, and then holding control is pushing in. Uh, the other as other part of the would be so you see it's red, it's, it's positive blue, negative, green is smoothing. So it's now going to smooth out everything. So you have the right mouse button for controlling the shape, you have control to go positive and negative, and then you have a shift to smooth. The one last aspect of the brush uh, is these are the brush shapes. So the only caveat is the grow brush doesn't use, doesn't accept these. It's always the default. So I'm going to switch to another brush to demonstrate these. So right now this is pretty similar to the same brush, but so we'll switch up to, and you can see the shape is uh, much different. So what we can do is 
you'll see how that affects things. It makes a different shape entirely. So these are just other ways to control the clay that is being uh, put out. This uh, same thing exists here. You can also paint with different brushes, um, but it, it's more of in a 2D way. So like if we would use this st standard brush, so basically it said you want to go back to to uh, surface mode, which we are. Um, so if, if you wanted to get a more solid edge, you could use this brush to get a more solid edge. If you wanted a really soft edge, you could use this brush. So those are just different ways to control what you're, what you're doing. The um, last aspect I want to show is the... well actually not last. So that there's other ways to use, uh, have brush control. So if we go back to the grow brush and let me get my tablets ready. Um, so now I'm using a tablet and I mean this is normally you'd use a tablet I would say I just happen to be using a mouse for demonstration uh, but the E menu so the E menu also exists right here so this is like if you look right here this icon is the is the way the brush is going to work so right now it is pressure sensitive to opacity so if I I'm just gonna use something that'll be a little more obvious so if I go light pr pressure to wait why is that might be that uh, I don't really see the difference right now so let me switch that to maybe there you can see so basically based on your pressure you can get this the radius of your brush to change um, with that one this would be just pressure pressure and radius um, but you can actually hover over and it'll it can tell you what what's going on um, and you can experiment with each of these so essentially those are all ones you play with these this one will be it'll be a direct straight line from one point to another um, and then these uh, spline tools would be making um, solids so that comes right off and this tool is uh, new but you can make splines but we're gonna go into those kind of specifics later um, so that's the E menu so you can hit E and it uh, pops up and as soon as you mouse away from that window it disappears so you can quickly pick wh whatever tool you want um, or you can come up here and do it and then the other uh, <laughs> excuse me, handful, I mean useful <laughs> uh, tool is symmetry. So symmetry is right here as well. You can pick an axis and then get symmetrical painting. Um, but you can also hit the S key which is very handy. Normally this is locked. And if you, you, don't, you can hide the symmetry plane so that it still is symmetrical but you don't see it. and you can unlock the symmetry plane. So what that means is where if I mouse over some geometry and I hit the tab key it will change the the symmetries which means that you're not gonna you know in this particular instance it's not gonna work as well but um, you can do that that's a way to readjust it. Uh, anyway there's just a, a walkthrough really quickly overview and then we're gonna go into specifics of uh, each area and uh, try to get you going on that. But again, it's probably going to be about you reading things, trying things, you know, experimenting, seeing what things do. Of course, like any application, this is only trying to get you going as fast as possible.